the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to this Cube Conversation here in the Cube Studios in Palo Alto. We're here for a remote interview. We're continuing with the COVID coverage, the quarantine crew. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. Got a great guest, Crystal Beaumont, the CEO of Talon. Just joined the company in the middle of the pandemic. Crystal, thanks for joining us and, and, and nice seeing you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, I think it's a really great conversation to have. A couple of threads that are interesting to me. One is Talon's a company we've been covering for a, a long time. Obviously, their, their position in the marketplace, we've been following their, their trajectory. You're new to the company, but you joined right in the middle of as COVID was going down and we're still in this mode and it looks like it's going to be for some time. I'd love to get your thoughts uh, as, as we're in this mode. Um, first, what attracted you to Talon? Uh, you're new. And what's it been like there since you've been there? You can't meet people face to face, so you must be doing a lot of remote uh, interviews and remote uh, conversations. Well, you're right about that. I had a very short window that I could get out on the road and I'm so grateful that I did because visiting our um, offices, our customers and our partners is critical to you know, really surrounding ourselves with um, amazing people that we have at Talent. But you know, I'll just go back to why I joined Talent, and it really goes to the customers. Our customer stories just captured my my attention right away. The way that Talent shows up to drive outcomes for customers that are tangible, that are quantifiable, and that are game changing was something that interested me. And it really is that at the heart of every conversation is data. So it was a simple uh, decision for me to say those are the types of things I want to be involved in. And so talent um, was definitely something that became very attractive. It's interesting, we've watched the progression of the big data market now 10 mm -hmm. years in and the explosion of cloud. Obviously everyone's talking about data as a key ingredient for application development. And you're still seeing kind of the challenges of how do you manage the data? And then how do you put that into action for insights? Because now you have these connected experiences and even more uh, highlighted with the COVID pandemic. You still got to run the business. You still need the data. The workforce is remote. The, the future of work, workforce, workplace, workloads and workflows all have data. <laughs> this is a real right. challenge with now the connected experience being the number one problem and making that mm -hmm. good and making that valuable. What's your take on That's that? That's right. I couldn't agree more. You know, we talk a lot about digital transformation for, for years, quite frankly. And I would say, you know, we've been in a digital transformation evolution. And I think what has happened now is COVID is an accelerant and it's a, now it's a digital revolution. And at the heart, or maybe the cornerstone, if you will, of uh, any data, uh, digital transformation is data transformation. You know, you think about uh, digital transformation is about mindset. It's about changing the entire way that you operate as a company. Um, it's not just about systems and technology. That's a really critical part. But everything that fuels the ability to get outcomes out of a digital transformation is data. And so the ability to um, leverage, like you said, there's connected data. There's more data than we've ever had. And that's a massive opportunity. But having a lot of data is not always uh, the answer. Sometimes that becomes um, a big responsibility with regulations and um, also something that if not carefully governed, um, not really something you can leverage properly to run your business. You know, so data is at the heart of, of all the things going on at this moment. It's interesting too, you know, a lot of the main trends outside of kind of the inside the industry discussions around data and the role of data, the consumer side of it is seeing it with fake news. You're seeing it with the data around COVID. Anyone can make data tell a story. And there's always, you know, causation right. versus correlation, that discussion. But when you start thinking of people being exposed to the data problems, there's an opportunity in there. And one of the big things is trust. What data can I trust? What's authentic? And then how do I make sure that it's not just supporting a story. There's all kinds of things going on around it. It makes it, seem like a broader challenge. Um, trust seems to be at the heart of it. What do you trust? Who's the source? It's just all life now is data infiltrated in all of our lives. It's certainly now exposed. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't be more right on that one. And you can see it play out in the media. You can see it play out again, this, this accelerating um, set of circumstances that are playing out every single day as people are staying so closely um, you know, watchful of 
data informing decisions that everyone's making around the world in a lot of different ways. And you've seen a lot of times where there's a question about the quality of the data, the accuracy of the data, um, who's providing the data. And, you know, that's the, the environment that Talent, you know, really supports and lives in, you know, even prior to COVID. But it just underscores the importance of not just having um, a complete set of data, and I would say even taking it further than just having what we would traditionally call quality of data, and really taking it down to something you used a really important word is trust. How can you make sure that the data that you're making decisions on is something you can trust? And when it comes to health and well-being, that's certainly something that you can't afford not to have. And it's um, it's an area that is underserved right now that we've spent a lot of time thinking about and, and how we're starting to show up to provide those solutions to our customers. I want to get into the customer conversation. I think there's a lot of use cases I want to unpack with you, but I want to first get your vision on how you guys see the future. What is the vision of Talon and how do you see it? What's the plan? What's the big story there? You know, there's a couple of things. I look at this and say right now in the industry and in our customers, which we cover all different segments, all different sizes of customers all around the globe, they have a variety of, of use cases, if you will, a variety of needs, everything from the most simple ingestion to some of the more um, complex transformation um, and governance projects that, that they're running. And first and foremost, we show up uniquely as a platform a, a platform that allows people to activate and utilize different parts of our of our services that we can provide to an entire organization. And that's something that is uh, really important to us. And we also look at how do we make the um, process in which they're using talent and the skills that are required, you know, really push the envelope on making those as simple as possible. The ability to get to time to value as quickly as possible is our ultimate goal. And then looking, you know, finally, you know, the third kind of um, the third lane is to make sure that we can provide not just, as I said, the completeness of data, but that it's really data that they can boil down to something that has intrinsic and quantifiable trust. Because all the time we spend, all the money that's spent on collecting the data is really only as good as the, you know, ability to say I can emphatically trust it, and I can tell you why, and I can show you the footprint of that data. And that's something really important um, right now, more than ever. I was talking to my uh, my family. I got four kids, and they're all kind of growing up now. And you know, we're having these conversations around COVID, and and the question of AI comes up all the time. And AI is very you know cool for kids, but they don't really know, talk about machine learning. So I got to ask you around how you see the machine learning piece come in because data feeds AI. I mean, you got it's a real. And I was, that's how I describe to my kids. Data is the fuel for AI, and you got to feed that in there. But it's not that easy. What's your t uh, reaction to that? Because I think a lot of companies are saying, I have to automate things. The DevOps world and agility come into the mainstream operations of businesses. Mm -hmm. And there's a agility piece, there's a value of the data that's being recognized, but now I got to put it into practice. What, right. What's the playbook? What's your reaction to all that? Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, first of all, AI and machine learning have a really important role in the simplification, the ability to move at speed and to you know, perform functions that quite frankly are going to move us into an entirely new realm of possibility. I still will contend whether you're, you're um, feeding um, that with, um, you know, anything that you feed data into with data has to be really good quality data. You know, AI machine learning is only as good as the information that you're, you're feeding it with. And so it is really, really critical that we, you know, we leverage these technologies to their fullest extent but that we make sure that we feed it in the right way. So I think it's a really big part of our future. I think it's something that's going to be important, but we have to have the, um, the certainty that we're using them in a way that's coming to you know, a place of the right outcome. And that starts with what you feed it to use, to go um, use to improve the processes. Crystal, one of the patterns we're seeing is that um, decision makers and CXOs are looking at the COVID pandemic and saying, okay, I did my thing, we're triage. Now I got to reset and get the foundation set again and look at the projects that are going to be important. And I got to figure out the holistic architecture because I need a growth strategy and I got to reset maybe some of the team members, projects and whatnot. What's your view on this? Because now new decisions have to be made, roles are, might change as well. So this is going to change how companies are going to make decisions. What's your reaction to that with the customer as they are trying to figure this out? What's your advice? 
Yeah, that's absolutely right. And this is about um, re-instrumenting a business, um, reinventing it in many cases. A great example is um, Domino's, who is um, maybe surprisingly for, for some, a pioneer in you know digital transformation that's been a number of years in the making that um, really has shown that with being in a state of being able to adapt quickly to circumstances and to be forward looking, how critical it is. And so I think this has been a wake up call for organizations across the globe to say, we have, have to be on the ready. We have to be able to be instrumented in a way that we can make quick decisions. In Domino's case, it, it became, you know, uh, originally the ability to, you know, they were the first pizza delivery to try out drones for pizza's delivery and, you know, to um, have gaming devices where you can order pizza because that's where their customers were at. And, you know, when COVID hit, contactless became a cri criteria. And so you can really see how they are able to separate themselves. You see people being leaders um, that have been further along in their transformation. So I think what this done, has done is, is expose some vulnerabilities, quite frankly. And this is a wake up call for companies around the globe that can no longer afford to be in a state where they can't pivot quickly. And looking backwards is no longer the thing that informs people in a state of something like COVID because there really aren't um, examples or patterns to look at. So re-instrumenting the business is really critical. Data has to be transformed to, to perform better for companies. It's interesting you bring that the point about the pivot and the kind of people's resetting and reinventing for that growth strategy is that you're seeing brand impacts and also financial results are um, directly related to it. So if you're not ready, this has a could have a real detrimental impact on the brand value and ultimately financial results. And this is kind of forcing people to say, it's not just an IT problem. It's a business model change. And data is shown now to be the key ingredient because that's where the agility is going to come from. That's where the value is there. And this has all been talked about in the industry before, but now it's kind of gone mainstream. This is now the new reality that my brand opportunity and the financial results of my company are at stake. Can you comment on your thinking around that? Because this is a top line, a high order bid, if you will, conversation among the top boardrooms. Yeah, it is. And I agree with you. You know, many of these conversations have been going on for a while now, right? And I think this just exposes the criticality of um, what happens when you're not in a state of um, being able to really reinvent yourself, or like I said, re-instrument. And if you're already in that state, how much better off you are brands are taking a hit in terms of their ability to show up and it goes beyond just their ability to perform you know uh, as a business but to really show up differently for their customers support people in a different way and really make sure that they can respond also from a social perspective you know how are they going to help and contribute to um, what the world is facing and so you know it really is asking uh, companies to really fire on all cylinders quite frankly i want to get your thoughts on two two uh, thought tracks and, and they're kind of connected, so bear with me. One is we've heard a lot from the marketplace that uh, with the pandemic, the reality of the IT teams that collect the data and the business teams that have to make the decisions are, are changing obviously with the, with the work at home and all the different dynamics around the app, app uh, re-architecting. And then you have the competitive advantage now, which people are pointing to as speed and scale. Mm -hmm. So you got mm -hmm. you know, internal kind of organizations that are managing, wrangling data, ingesting data, the business teams who are the customers. And that's kind of the, was the slow rolling way it was before. Mm -hmm. Now you got that changing and now you got pressure to be faster and sc more scalable. So scale is a competitive advantage, speed's a competitive advantage. These are yeah. important kind of flywheel elements of the new models that people are being successful with. What is your reaction to that? I couldn't agree more. It is um, a competitive weapon, quite frankly. It is an operational accelerant and it is an innovation catalyst. And, you know, um, time is um, no one, you know, no one's friend, quite frankly. You know, it's one of those odd things right now where um, for all of us that are working from home and time has this odd sense of um, reality to it. But it's, you know, really quite frankly, you cannot act fast enough. But what's interesting about enabling um, companies to, to act fast, that has to come down to the ability for them to be able to, you know, spend the time in the right places. So for example, when I think about the number one thing that we can do is it takes a lot for organizations sometimes to um, put the, the information in the hands of the right people at the right time 
so that the, you know, the time that's being spent by an overall company, not just an individual within a company, but the entire company, you have to be able to decrease that so that the time that they're spending is actually on helping drive outcomes. And so some of this, and you, you just struck a, a chord on, in everything I think about is how quickly we can get the right data in the hands of the right people. Because you know, in AstraZeneca's case, for example, the difference of being able to do that, um, their, their highest cost uh, in their business is clinical trials. Being able to get information you can use and reduce a month of you know, how fast they can bring um, those clinical trials to bear is saving them hundreds of millions of dollars. But you know, that right now, AstraZeneca is an important player in helping us solve for this. So you think about how important it is to get information to the right people and, and time is um, of critical essence right now. Yeah, it's interesting, you also, there's, a, there's a, that business model advantage, but also you got a lot of, and that's an opportunity for many, but mm -hmm. there's also a lot of, I won't say heavy lifting, but maybe a drag, and some might call it compliance. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. GDPR or whatnot. Balancing that kind of, I won't say drag, I mean, I think it's a drag personally, but I think we have to have those <laughs> things in place. You want to maintain the compliance uh, rigidity that's out there, but also have room to innovate. That balance is very difficult and it's really mostly highlighted in the data business because that's where the action is around data privacy and those compliance things. But the, if you got an innovation formula there that you're talking about and you got compliance, if you get one wrong and right, you got to balance it. What, what's your take on oh. that? Because that's a huge challenge. It's one of those things that's kind of not talked about much, but it's pretty much there. You're right, and it is it is a complete balance, but um, you can't have one without the other. In highly regu regulated industries, especially with um, companies like AstraZeneca, but really, if you think about any company, the, uh, the ironic thing right now is that when you're looking at um, even a single report, um, but certainly across an entire uh, company or a line of business, Right now, you can see that there's um, quality measures and governance that you know we, we put into play, but the ability to actually quantifiably say on a single piece of data that you can track you know, where that data's been, who's touched it, um, how complete is it, and really kind of put a measurable trust score against it. There's work to be done there. But you know, with GDPR, with uh, HIPAA, and interestingly enough, you know, we're looking to, you know, kind of challenge some of the norms with COVID that says we now want to collect uh, data that is formally considered privacy, you know, and, and maybe something that would be regulated. And now we want to share it for the greater good of, you know, making sure that we can uh, track and trace where people are at that maybe are, are infected and so forth. And so you're starting to see this, this interesting conversion of um, challenging the fact that we've got to at least be able to support people um, in their governance of data, but take that a step further, really. Awesome. Uh, final question, you had Talent Connect, which is your big kind of confab. Um, what best practices are emerging out of uh, Talon these days for customers? If you had to kind of highlight the top use cases or best practices that uh, customers and your potential customers could leverage right now with data, what are you guys putting out there? What are the key best practices? Because you know, everyone has a new reality. That's acknowledged, we talked deeply about it, but what's the best practices? What are you guys offering? Well, I think you know one of the things that um, I alluded to before is really making sure that we show up as a strategic business partner. And this is really important to us. You know, the, all this, these things that we've been talking about, they are, um, they're heavy lifting for organizations to really look at how they you know, bring the digital revolution to the forefront. There's a lot to consider. And so our part in that is to say, we believe that when you power your business on talent and you're able to um, solve for a number of different problems across the platform, that that's really important that we show up in the way that we can meet our customers where they're at. So that's one, um, making it simple, you know, really pushing the boundaries on the level of expertise, the specialization, the time to value of making sure that they can leverage, again, spending their time on the things that are important, which are making sure that they're spending it in, in uh, quality data and data they trust. And then really making sure that that final lane is covered up saying, you know, we want to make sure that data is accessible when you need it and where you need it. You know, things like IoT and edge devices, this proliferation of data is just becoming immense. And so taking the data, getting it to people, but in a way that they can have confidence. It's the same thing you just said before, you know, there's a lot to consider and um, there's in a way a burden of people not knowing maybe all the data they have and how it's being used. 
we feel responsibility to make sure that we're part of helping that become easy and identifiable and really taking it to the next step uh, beyond quality. So it's really across all of it, just simply putting uh, people in a position to be able to make good decisions and not have to do so much of the heavy lifting and making sure that they know for a fact that it's something that they've made a good decision around because of the data has been um, trusted and they can have the confidence in that. Awesome, we think data is a competitive advantage. It's going to be more important ever and ever as the days go on. So great, great insight. Crystal, thank you for that insight. Um, before we end, take a minute to um, put the plug in for Talon. What are you up to? Um, you guys hiring, you're looking for folks. What's the business plan? Um, why are you guys winning? What's the hot products? Take a minute to give up a, mm -hmm. a, a quick update on Talon. Sure, you know, we're in a great um, situation where, you know, this is a, um, a point in time at Talon where you know, we have a great trajectory in front of us. We see speed and scale of our organization that has an opportunity in front of it to really help solve problems for every part of the market, you know, whether it's the, you know, smaller businesses who are certainly in a, at a point where they're, um, you know, having a big impact to the largest organizations. And we feel that there's a set of solutions that we can really work to drive as a partner to each of those customers to solve for the problems that put them in a position to really be able to re-instrument and, and to reinvent their business. And when we partner, like we have with the companies that I mentioned, Domino's and AstraZeneca and many others, you know, it comes back to why I joined Talent. We have the ability to change the outcome of really separating um, organizations from the pack and data is the competitive advantage. It is the thing that will put um, people on a different trajectory. And I'm excited about what we bring to the table and I'm really excited about what's to come and how we'll continue to push the envelope for how we help our customers. That's awesome, congratulations. Congratulations on the new role of Talon as the CEO. Crystal Beamont, Thank CEO you. of Talon. Um, data is at the heart of the value proposition. We've been saying that for 10 years now more than ever. It's exposed mm -hmm. that the value is there. Speed and scales, the new table stakes for competitiveness and business models for the applications. Uh, again, great CUBE conversation, great insight. Crystal, thank you for joining me today. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. It's been a CUBE conversation. Thanks for watching.